it just got to this point where uh, people are like, you know, you, sh you should probably do something with this. And I think it was a polite way of telling me to stop talking about food. <laughs> it was clearly time to act on her passion, so Cedar enrolled in culinary school. And I started stodging at restaurants. And I you started, started wedding at like, restaurants? Working for free at restaurants and, you know, carrying big pots of stock. It's like the lowest of the low levels. I mean, you have to start really low. And then I started assisting a food stylist on this short-lived television show and that I would wake up early in the morning and, you know, help her out. And so I really was not sleeping at all, but I was really enjoying life and um, just so glad that I moved into the direction of food. All right, I'm going to put you under oath now. You have to give me an honest answer. How many cookbooks do you own? <sighs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I have books in the kitchen. I have books in the living room. I have books in the back den room. I have books upstairs. Like, I just have books everywhere. Do you have cookbooks in the bathroom? <laughs> no, that's disgusting. No. Well, that's people where, read in the bathroom. We, we draw the line there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> what was the inspiration for this book? At what point did the light bulb did the go light, off? Okay, so it was 2018. We were having a heat wave here in Maine. It was really uncomfortable and we live in an old house. We don't have central AC. So by the end of the day, I just started making food that felt right to me, that felt right to my body. When Vanessa Cedar had worked on other people's cookbooks, the summer recipes often featured food that was grilled or slow cooked, burgers, ribs, things like that. There's a seeming paradox that Cedar's cookbook addresses, which is that people who live in hot climates, such as Mexico or India or Thailand, often have cuisines filled with hot, spicy foods. Everything from teas to chili peppers. That stuff doesn't really cool you down. Lighter, cooler dishes yeah. that are easy to make. Yes. This wasn't like a profound uh, revelation that you had that completely transformed our understanding of astrophysics or something. Absolutely not. This was just food that works in the summertime when it's hot. Exactly, but also recipes that don't heat up your kitchen as much. When you eat something that's hot or spicy, it triggers the TRPV1 receptor to signal the hypothalamus in the brain. That's our, our body's thermostat. And it signals that, triggers it, and that's what causes you to sweat. So it's eating hot to cool, in a sense. Do you, when the weather really heats up, find yourself eating more spicy food? It does work. It totally works. Sometimes I will make a hot tea. I have a hot tea recipe in the book. It's a ginger lemongrass tea. It's the only hot drink in the book. There is something to that. When it's really, really hot out and you're drinking something hot and you start to sweat, it does help you cool down. And they've been doing this for hundreds of years in these countries. There are a lot of cookbooks that are gorgeous to look at, but that's what people do is they look at them and they don't really make the recipes that are in the book. Yeah. You want people to make your recipes, oh, don't you? Oh, please get my cookbook dirty. That's all I can ask for. <laughs> get it greasy, stain it, use it, love it. When I write a book, it's almost like uh, my teacher part of me comes out and I'm thinking about what I want people to learn and, and how to communicate with people in a way where they'll actually make the recipes. That's my goal. That's my hope. <laughs> you dedicated the book to your husband. It sounds like he's like me. I get cranky when it's really hot and humid, and I think that uh, you said that he finds the heat and humidity soul-crushing. You're very similar in that <laughs> regard, I must say. All right, one last question. Yeah, of course. Have you, have you ever fried an egg on the sidewalk? <laughs> I actually haven't. I mean, it makes it brings me back to the dare ads in the 80s, you know, like your brain on drugs. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, but you know, hot enough to fry an egg on a sidewalk, that's always the same I know. for extreme I, heat. You know what? I've never done it. I think I have to do that soon. I have never fried an egg on the sidewalk. That's a really good idea. I don't know what I'll do with the egg afterwards, but we'll see if it really works. <laughs>